Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is my first video of 2023, so Happy New Year to everybody. Today, I'm looking at something a little bit different from the normal reviews that we do on this channel. This is a portable SDR radio from a company in China called Deep Elec. You might have come across the name before, as they make a range of antenna analyzer products that are extremely popular called Nano VNA. This is their first attempt to break into the ever popular budget SDR, that's software defined radio market, so I thought I'd check out one direct from the manufacturer on AliExpress. The price comes in at around 100 US dollars including shipping, and this seems like a very competitive price. The radio covers from 100 kHz right up to 149 MHz in all modes including AM, SSB and wideband FM. Sadly, there is no narrowband FM and this severely limits the usefulness of this radio above the HF spectrum. For example, even though this radio covers the 2 meter amateur radio band, you won't be able to monitor local FM transmissions, as there is only wideband FM available for the FM broadcast frequencies. Anyway, for the money, you get a very nice package including a shiny blue metallic finished case. It's got a real nice kind of feel to it, rubbery and smooth. Inside the case, you have the radio, a telescopic antenna, and the USB-C charge cable, along with a quick start guide, a touchscreen stylus, a desktop stand, and a screen protector. Taking the radio out of the packaging, I was immediately impressed with the quality finish of the casing. The radio is housed in an all-metal alloy casing in a really pleasant light blue finish. The whole thing seems really premium and a cut above other similar radios in the price range. There is a large rotary encoder fitted on the right hand side of the radio and this function does almost everything as it controls the VFO and other menu options. It has a very positive feel and a very satisfying positive movement as you spin it around. You push this inwards to select and confirm most options. The front of the radio contains the large IPS touchscreen. This is a 4.3 inch screen and has a resolution of 800 by 400 pixels and the brightness is very impressive as you'll see in a few moments. Moving back to the left hand side of the radio, you'll immediately notice the antenna port is fitted with a BNC connection. This is an excellent choice and is much more robust than other similar SDR radios that often come with the much more fragile SMA type connector. Being a BNC connector, you can easily source an adapter to connect the radio to your preferred antenna system. The supplied telescopic antenna isn't really going to be much use for most HF listening. It's far too short to pick up much other than the strong signals from the shortwave broadcast stations and unfortunately, it doesn't stay up very easily either. I've seen other reviewers comment on this cheap antenna, and when placed at the right angle, it will constantly fall down and flop around all over the place. I've no idea what they were thinking of when they included this in the package, as it's totally unsuitable for portable listening, and after all, the radio is marketed as a portable solution. Speaking of which, the radio contains a 5000 mAh battery pack and Deepalect claim up to 10 hours listening time. Having used this radio for quite some time, I can agree that the unit has a very long battery life and takes around 3 hours to fully charge from flat. When the unit is charging, a red LED indicator blinks until the battery is full and then it changes to solid red. When it's not charging but switched on, the light is blue. So let's have a look at the radio in more detail. Booting up the SDR101 only takes a second. It's extremely fast and the display looks fantastic. The radio has such a nice bright IPS touchscreen panel. Everything is very clear and easy to read, and that brings us very nicely onto the next part of the review. The radio is capable of monitoring 192 kHz of spectrum on its default setting. This is the maximum bandwidth that the radio is capable of monitoring. This is more likely down to the processing power available. Don't expect the performance to be similar to PC based SDR solutions such as those from SDR Play. These can monitor huge chunks of spectrum up to 10 MHz, but that would require a lot of processing power. In the top left hand corner, we can see an FPS counter, this is for the frames per second. As things get busy, the FPS drops down when the processor is under load. It's interesting that the maker included this feature, as it's normally only available in debugging information but could give us a clue as to the load on the processor. With having such a large touchscreen display, you'd think the operation would be quite easy to tune around and select a frequency. Well not so. In fact the touchscreen is hardly used in the current version of the software, and the only thing it is really used for is the direct frequency entry. This is a real disappointment, as the interface for getting around is quite clunky and convoluted. For example, selecting a frequency involves holding down the rotary encoder to change the digit position, and then rolling this up or down at the same time. You'll soon get fatigue from these finger gymnastics, as that's basically it for moving around across the screen onto other options such as setting the mode, IF gain levels and the volume levels. Speaking of which, 
Volume level from the internal speaker is selected in the same way. The built-in speaker is small but surprisingly good and has a reasonable tone quality. There is also another menu option for setting the external speaker volume independently of the built-in one. This is good because you can connect to an external speaker or headphones or even to a PC sound card for decoding data modes independently as it doesn't cut off the internal speaker. Input of a frequency is really easy thanks to the touchscreen. Simply tap the frequency display and you can key in the entry directly. By pressing the M or K, you can specify this in megahertz or kilohertz. Sadly, that's about the limit of the touchscreen function with the current firmware. The developer really missed the trick when it came to making the radio more functional and taking advantage of the large screen display. Going forward, this could be fixed in a future firmware update. For example, the large spectrum and waterfall display takes no advantage of the touchscreen function. If you move your finger over the display, it simply freezes the current view. Surely when using the stylus, you should be able to tune the radio by dragging the center frequency marker around to tune to the adjacent signals. This lack of basic functionality really spoils the enjoyment of having a large colorful display. After you've been using the radio for a while, the operation becomes really tiresome with the constant need to use the rotary encoder and even change modes. The guys at Deeperlec really need to have a rethink in this one. Other annoyances include the fixed filter bandwidth on SSB and AM. There is no reason why these cannot be user defined, as after all, it is an SDR radio. Instead, you are stuck with 2.6 kHz on SSB and 9 kHz on the AM mode. Regarding the spectrum display, you can switch between 192 kHz, 128 kHz and 64 kHz. This is again achieved by holding down the rotary encoder and rolling it around until the bandwidth symbol appears in red. You can also change the colour of the spectrum graph in a similar way and change the dynamic dB range of the grid depending on the signal strength. And that brings us on to something else. The receiver is often overloaded by strong signals even when connected to a modest antenna system. You can see the results of overloading in the test clips that we'll show you in the next few moments. Internally generated noise was also an issue with this receiver. Quite often the spectrum scope shows peaks when no signal is present and even without the antenna connected you can often see phantom signals that really should not be there. Whether this can be fixed or improved with future firmware updates is debatable but my feeling is that this is a limitation of the hardware used. Also on some frequencies noise is present when simply touching the screen or touch keypad so this is never a good sign. Memories on the radio also seem to be a rather troublesome topic. On one hand, there are 99 programmable memories, but at the moment you can't program them from the radio directly. You need to connect it to a PC to edit the contents. This requires you to connect the USB-C cable to your computer, turn off the radio and then hold down the rotary encoder while powering on, then the radio's internal memory appears as a USB drive showing a 1 megabyte capacity. You'll find a CSV file that you can edit, using Excel or similar, program the frequency, mode and name and then save this back to the built-in file storage. It's an interesting way of doing things but again why can't this be done from the screen directly without a PC? Just another example of the lacking functionality of the radio. Again firmware updates could address this functionality and would make things so much more usable. On a more positive note, during the test that you're about to see, the audio quality from the unit was actually pretty decent. Stability was also good. SSB stations were crisp and clear, and although the AGC didn't seem to work very well, and certainly didn't make a difference as it would do on a traditional HF receiver, I found keeping the radio set to the slow setting seemed to work best in most cases, although strong signals on adjacent frequencies would cause the radio to desensitise and drop the signal down significantly. The tests I've run on the radio have been performed connected to an NFED long wire antenna of about 53 feet in length via a ballon. Conditions on the HF bands were relatively poor at the time of testing, but the radio sensitivity seemed on par with my Yaesu FT857D, however the strong signal handling left much to be desired. Adjusting the IF gain helped a little, but overall didn't make a huge difference. Italy Zulu 5, Mexico, Japan, Sierra, Carlin DX, and listen, cure that. Security X, Security X, Security X, Calin, Italy Zulu 5, Mike Julius Sierra. Security X, Calin, Security X, Italy Zulu 5, Mexico, Japan, Sierra, Calin, Dia. Security X, Security X, Security X.
Italy, Zulu, 5, Mexico, Japan, Sierra, Carlin, DX, and listen, you heard of that? We got nothing but time, and uh, lots of patience, because you're so nice and loud here this morning. You're, at one time, you're peaking 5 and 9, a little bit of QSP, but not too awfully bad. Happy New Year to you, my friend. I hope uh, <laughs> and, uh, the XYL didn't stay up too late to keep you up, but uh, we'll look to see you for a little bit. Uh, and on 14 255 with the JA uh, coming through very nicely. Nothing out of the FTA. I think that was a bunch of garbage myself. Is there a bunch of bad posts, if you will? But I wouldn't listen anyway, just in case. I also am chasing, uh, chasing him down. I need him and possibly Bouvet, and if I can get to those two, I'll be on the honor roll. So I, I have a, I'm doing it with purpose, <laughs> uh, from the States anyway, and uh, just keep our fingers crossed I'll be able to do so. Okay, I'll have to cut off the detail in the uh, paper log. Okay, wish you all the best anyway, and catch you a bit later. And do VK2 to the Black Sally, A7 and B8. Sagen Sie, Sie waren ein bisschen äh, heftig, da haben wir ein bisschen Probleme gehabt. Aber mir geht es jetzt ganz gut. Ich sitze hier, wie üblich, hier in Ibiza vor der Funke und alles funktioniert. Und du hast auch angerufen, ein paar Freunde haben sich gemeldet heute Morgen. Ich hab, hat mich sehr gefreut. War sehr schön hier. Five nine in the clear, no problem at all. Martin, uh, thank you very much uh, for coming to my call. Let me wish you all the best to you for this uh, 2023, and of course, happy uh, New Year. Thank you, Martin. Hope to meet you again on the bus. Uh, Mike Zero, Lima Exway, Mike Echo Hotel Three, Hotel Nancy Yankee Seven Three. Yes. Beaming Pacific Area Long Path, uh, looking for VK ZL JA. Security Axon 20 meters. Italy Kilo 4, Papa, Oscar, India. Security X. Beaming Pacific Area Long Path and looking for VK, ZL, JA and standing by. 5 and I mean Monoman 4 for 20. I am usually 1 kilowatt. Thank you very much for the call every night, DX. Joy, New Year. For you and your family. VK3 uh, question my J2 GTM. Cheers, arrivederci, grazie. Repeating, Paris Early Metroport. Paris Early at 09 0 Wind 210 degrees 10 knots. Cab OK. Temperature 1 2. New Town East. QMA 1018. No six. So, uh, 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 I know John very well, I've known John for over, uh, near, well, for nearly near enough 30 years, and Kevin, I've known for, for, for a few years, for, 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 for just over 10 years or so. So, um, I sometimes go over to the, uh, go to the Gibraltar, uh, and I guess I'm there, uh, uh, back to you over. In working condition, Mark. Right, right.
Well, that about wraps it up for this review. Hope you've enjoyed looking at the Deep SDR101. Let's hope that some firmware updates are forthcoming and we can report back on those in a future video. But for now, let me know in the comments what you think about this little SDR radio. Is it good value for money? Will you be buying one? Or will you suggest something else completely? Plenty of other models out there at the moment from China and they're all very competitive on price. So maybe your experiences are different from mine there, but uh, do leave some comments and remember to subscribe to the channel. And thank you very much for watching. Goodbye for now.